Welcome back, Akron fans! This is gonna be the second match of round three of the 2013 Christmas Tournament, which I realize has been taking quite some time, but I've made that joke already. So, second match, Cybernetic Pony versus Kitan. We saw the first one was Gold versus Monkey, and Gold won decisively, 2-0. Both times with a lot of Chrono Porting, as is Gold's style. So now, Cybernetic Pony versus Kitan. The first match is gonna be on Tomb of Heroes. Let's waste no time. Titan, starting on the east side of the map. He is probably going to be playing... Oh, Grekum. Okay, of course. He's, of course he's going to be playing Grekum. I should know this. Cybernetic Pony, however, is probably going to be playing CISO. And yes, he is. He is indeed playing CISO. Both players, as you'd expect, are playing their favorite species, because why wouldn't you? This is a tournament, after all. Winning is important, because winning means that you continue playing. And losing means that you can only play friendly matches you can only play in the tournament. But you can still play. I mean, we're not going to ban you from the game or anything if you lose the tournament. In fact, I don't even think there's any capacity for banning people from Acron to begin with, now that I think about it. So, yeah. Honor system, I guess. Granted, we haven't really had any trolls at all. Oh well, anyway. Just to avoid possibly, you know, speaking of the devil as it were, I'm just gonna stop that. Anyway, Kitan going for a very quick Octopod, early Octopod defense as is typical. And Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, is getting a very early factory. Four RPs into a factory and a second importer. I expect quick ATHCs. No Q Plasma has been built yet, so Lancers would be pretty much out of the question. But ATHCs? Not a bad idea. Could work with this. No early armory, however, so Cybernetic Pony is going to be a bit late on... No, a Lancer! Interesting, he is going for an early Lancer. I'm not sure why he's invested so much in Liquid Crystal as a result, but... Yeah, he is going for a very early Lancer for scouting. However, from here, he really doesn't have any Q-Plasma to actually build anything other than mechs from the factory. So, I don't know exactly what he's planning on doing other than maybe building an armory, or... Well, obviously he's built more Q-Plasma RPs, that's another way of going about it. Oh, of course, and an armory! The proxy armory there is that's what I was looking for. Knew there was something that was up, because that lands on its own. Pretty big cost in Liquid Crystal, especially being that it is going to... Not going to die, actually, thanks to... Well basically tricking the AI. However, Kitan is a minute and a half down from there. He has plenty of time. I mean, his Octopod is going to be up by the time this attack ultimately arrives. So Kitan, well aware of what's going to happen. He can easily retarget the Seppi if he needs to to kill that Lancer. Not have it waste time, but honestly, the Octopod will deal with that no problem. Cybernetic Pony, I guess he's trying to mask the fact that he's going for a rush by building a Lancer, making it look like he's just going for a standard scout opening. Clever. That is definitely quite clever. I'm curious to see how it's going to work with the... Octopod. The Octopod, of course, just wrecks infantry. Octopods are pretty much the countered infantry for Grekum. Therefore, I don't think this is going to work very well. We'll see, though. I mean, enough infantry would probably be able to overwhelm it. That, I mean, the infantry, seasonal infantry deal a lot of damage. Their weakness, of course, like with infantry in the game in general, is health. They're unable to deal a whole lot of damage over a long period of time just because they die very quickly. So the great at attacking defenseless things. Well, okay, that goes without saying. But I mean, in large numbers, they'd be able to deal with the octopods no problem because enough of them would be able to get through. A bunch would die, but the survivors would be able to kill the octopod. And since they're so cheap, it actually wouldn't be a big problem. And especially since three importers essentially means that Cybernetic Pony is going for this. He is going for this. He is gonna. We are going to see an infantry rush very soon. And wisely keeping his forces back, but unwisely throwing his Lancer into the fray, and that's going to go down to the Seppi. Not even the Octopod. The Octopod's helping, but the Seppi's going to kill it. Cybernetic Pony, is he going to move this back? I don't think so. However, what he is doing is building up some Marines. And that is where we're going to see everything... Well, we're going to see everything come together, whether or not Cybernetic Pony wins this match. Now, of course, this is round one, meaning... Or not round one, sorry, this is match one. This is game one. So, there's plenty of time. If Cybernetic Pony fails at this, he's got... To, he has to win two matches afterwards. He has to win two matches now, so nothing really has changed. Just to make sure he doesn't lose in the meantime. But yeah, he's got the flexibility to do this. Now, Kitan, let's see what he's up to. Kitan, on the other hand, has not really gone for anything out of the ordinary. It looks like he's getting pretty standard economy build. A little bit surprised he hasn't got so many forces here. It looks like he is actually... No, he's attacking forward. Further in the past, he has decided to go for a bit of a proxy. That is exactly what he's up to. Now, Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand has, well, continue to build more, more and more infantry. He is now out of reserves, however. He doesn't have enough to actually continue building, but those will build up fairly soon. Four importers are up, 
and Kitan, from his point of view, is about three minutes down from here. He is setting up his proxy. He is clearly committed to this. He has taken a fair amount of damage in his main base, but he does have a lot in stock. I mean, Akron doesn't exactly have any sort of storage system, so the resources in the bank are unlimited. If you lose your resource gathering pr structures, you do not lose the resources. So Kitan will still be able to build a lot of Octos from here, and will be able to just tear apart this base, because it's basically defenseless. All the defense is being built right next to Severn Pony, sorry, right next to Kitan's base. Severn Pony has this proxy going, and apparently he's actually saved the Lancer. He, or no, this is this has got to be a second Lancer. Nope, not a second Lancer. That would have to be the first Lancer. Because, of course, the forces in Kitan's base have been moved, and Severn Pony is probably getting suspicious now, although Kitan has not yet started to build up any Octos. Severn Pony is about 10 seconds up from where Kitan is right now, the 315 mark, and probably suspicious of the fact that there's not much in the main base. Kitan answering proxy with proxy, but having not had his proxy, I mean, he hasn't set up his proxy yet, so Severn Pony has invested a lot right to his proxy. It's going to take him a while to move back to his main base to defend it. Now, on the other hand, with enough cube plasma, he will be able to, I should say, Cyber Nanny Pony will be able to build up ATHCs and Lancers and defend against this, but he doesn't have an armor in his main base. His main set of troops has not been built here, and I think the Lancer is going to start looking around, trying to figure out what Kitan is up to. I think Cyber Nanny Pony has realized that something is up, something is wrong. He's not taking enough damage, he's not taking any damage. Now, Kitan, on the other hand, has gotten, he has his Octos up. They are attacking at the 333 mark. And the red time wave will carry them forward. Cyber Nanny Pony is looking at the same point in time as well. And he has not yet sent any units forward. But now he knows. Now he sees the Octos. And Cyber Nanny Pony is not quite reacting to this yet. He hasn't jumped back. He has now jumped back to the 330 mark. And moving his Marine into the center of his buildings. He did have a nice sim base, which is definitely in his favor. But the Octopod coming in here will make that a problem. Now, Octopus have lob weapons, by the way. Oh, sorry, they have line of sight weapons. They don't have lob weapons. However, the Marine not taking advantage of that, that it does have a lob weapon, gets killed, and that is painful! Because that Marine was the defense for this base. That is going to be... Oh boy, that is just painful. At this point, Cyber Nanny Pony is trying to do what he can to get rid of Kitan's base and maybe go for a base swap. While Kitan, on the other hand, able to take care of this, and a Lancer... Cyber Nanny Pony's Lancer did move in, Oh, it will be moving in fairly soon. And Cyber Pony moving away a resource processor to try to save it. Moving as many as he can away from his base. Though it's difficult to actually save them because Kitan doubtless has seen this. He knows what's going on. He knows that there's going to be resource processors being moved around. And once the importers are down, he's going to hunt them down and kill them too. But at the same time, Cyber Pony is going to try to take care of Kitan's base and go for a proper base swap. Now, Kitan, on the other hand, he doesn't have a whole lot of money in the bank right now. I think he could rebuild, but it would be tough. However, this Lancer not able to actually destroy the forces, so it's just a question of whether or not Kitan will be able to save up enough money for another resource processor once the one he has there is dead. And now the Arcticus has gone down. Kitan's command structure is down, but it doesn't really matter at this point. All he cares about will be rebuilding. getting, And he has enough for another resource processor. If he loses everything here, he could rebuild. It would be a slow process, but as it would be for Cyber Nanny Pony. Both players are kind of behind, though. I think Cyber Nanny Pony has a bit more flexibility. He does have a production structure available, though so does Kitan in a sense, and he does have resource processors still alive, though Kitan will doubtless hunt them down. I'm a bit surprised he actually hasn't at this point. And Cyber Nanny Pony now moving to rebuild, getting more RPs in Kitan's base. So at this point, Cyber Nanny Pony does have RPs that are in fact very much alive. Nothing to worry about, not going to be hunted down easily. But Kitan, on the other hand, does have a stronger military. So right now, Cyber Nanny Pony is a bit stronger, a faster economy, but Kitan is a stronger military. It's going to come down to who wins after they meet up once again. And Kitan actually... Well, like I said, he had more than enough for a resource processor. He could easily rebuild from there. And it looks like, at this point, is Cyber Nanny Pony... He's going to move back. He's going to move out and reassault his old base. See how he does that. It's going to take him a couple minutes to get there. At the same time, he is continuing to build up in his... Well, in Kitan's old main base. Getting that going, as is typical in a base swap, and it looks like the RP is actually successfully running away. Kitan has not gone after it. He's not sent any forces to deal with it, so that RP is just... It's its able to get away. I mean, it's defenseless. It can't do anything. All it can do is run and hope that Kitan does not find it. Very scary situation to be in. But, of course, Kitan's going to be more worried about rebuilding himself. He's going to go for it. He is attacking 
And this is where Cybernetic Pony was really clever. He didn't move to this location right here. Chitin cannot actually attack there and find anything. He he is looking there, and that's the place he would look. That's the natural place to look, but Chitin will find nothing. And I'm sure he expects that from that point he's going to look around. He's going to find it. He's going to find a couple over here by this base, this ridge over to the northeast. And, of course, he's going to end up looking elsewhere and he's going to find them eventually. But it still buys some time. Now, Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, actually was is able to deal enough damage getting rid of Chitin's base near the future. Well, near the present, actually. So Chitin's going to have to deal with this, and Chitin's going to have a couple reefs built up to deal with this reef in Antarctus. And that will help out quite a lot. Yes, he has a fully set up base, and he does have most of his forces outside just scouting around, trying to get rid of as many resource processors as possible. Though, I'm a little bit curious where his Octopod is. It looks like... There it is. Hunting down resource processors to the, well, southwest, right next to the center in this ridge over here. And you will be able to get rid of those. Those two resource processors have been found. They will die. Of course, there are three inside Cybernetic Pony's base, so he's managed to rebuild regardless. And, of course, Cybernetic Pony's infantry coming in here. Now, this reef may be a game changer, but on the other hand, Chitin has moved away. Chitin has not dealt with this. He has moved his forces away from his base, and a lot of his forces have been turned into resource processors, and Seppi's in fright. Everything's been... All this base was units he'd built, or money he spent on building units. So he doesn't have a great military in his main base. Though he has a stronger economy than Cybernetic Pony at this point. And in fact, Cybernetic Pony has no importers. He can't... He cannot easily get out of this. So, Cybernetic Pony should be able to tear apart Chitin's base still, and Cybernetic Pony once again checking it out, and looks like he is still able to tear this apart. Now, an Octopod and an Octo, not much resistance here. I think Chitin is going to lose this match. I think Cybernetic Pony's strategy will pay off. We'll find out, though. Chitin is trying to play around with this. He is trying to change what's going on. He doesn't have a lot of current energy, though. He can't easily command... Well, he can easily command his forces in. The Arcticus can, of course, send them in to attack the infantry attacking. And I'm a bit surprised they aren't doing that now while the Reef is still up, because the Reef is about to go down, and Chitin not moving to save it. This is very bizarre. Why is Chitin not moving to save the Reef? Because that Reef needs to not die. That's the best thing he has going for him, and it is unfortunately going to die. Chitin has not... Okay, Chitin has now sent some forces in, and the Reef is able to kill them, but even then... I mean, you don't, obviously don't want the Reef to die if you can avoid it, but even with the Reef alive, it's not enough, and unfortunately, I think Chitin is going to... Chitin, his only hope is that this Octopod is out of range. The Marines have not dropped down to go deal with it. They have not gone south to deal with it. They have continued to attack the main base directly, and Cybernetic Pony is losing Marine after Marine as a result. They are basically defenseless. Why are they not... Well, okay, the AI is not that smart, so it's not entirely surprising that they aren't going back to attack that Octopod. But they are losing many of their number as a result. However, at the same time, Cybernetic Pony's still getting rid of Chitin's base. I think Chitin has no... He has no room to rebuild. Cybernetic Pony still has room to rebuild. He has an importer. He has a factory. He has RPs. Cybernetic Pony has this match in the bag. I don't even think there's any way to lose. Even after losing... After losing what he's lost, Chitin still doesn't have anything to rebuild with. The Auto and the Autobot are not enough. You need to borrow at minimum. And that is not there. And the Auto moving into Cy Cybernetic Pony's base to try to deal with his base as best as possible, but even that's not going to be enough. Still has RPs, but nothing he can spend it on. No way to spend that money, basically. And Cybernetic Pony... I mean, he might actually lose that armory. We'll see if he builds more Marines to deal with it, but I think this importer won't... No, it won't build in time. He won't be able to rebuild anything to get this armory to not die, but this factory should be fine. If he gets a Lancer from there, actually, that'll be that'll get rid of the Octopod. Sorry, I think it the Octo. The Octopod will still be able to take care of it, but the Octo will die. And then the Octopod will die soon after, after everything else goes to kill. So basically, it's a matter of if Cybernetic Pony can build forces in time to stop Chitin's Octo and Octopod, and I'm pretty sure the answer is yes. I seriously don't see any way he could not be able to rebuild quickly enough. The only possible way that he'd lose is basically if he doesn't rebuild anything. And a special off is being built to get rid of this Octo, or at least weaken it quite a lot. Should be able to do the trick. And it looks like there actually is enough time to build another... Another infantry unit should be able to be built at the same time. Another special ops would be... Oh, but no, the Octopod has come in, and that will stop it. That will stop that armory from building anything in time. And another importer being built. A nice sim base as well. This Marine is in a much better position than the last one was. Assuming it's not stupid and runs forward into the gap between buildings and ends being hit by the Octopod. Machinery being built, so I'm guessing a Tornado will be forthcoming, and ATHCs as well are coming up. But yeah, a Tornado or a Tank looks like it's very likely to be forthcoming. And this is... looks like it's going to be terrible timing. Chitin moving in, and Cybernetic Pony, he had his Sim base going, but it's not quite enough, and he does have a Lancer over to the north, 
not able to do too much because it will die if it enters combat at this point. But this Marine needs to move into the middle of the buildings. It is not doing so. Cybernetic Pony does not have it in a safe position. And this ATHC kiting this Octo quite nicely. But even then, Cybernetic Pony is low on Chrono Energy. He can't easily kite it for long. But he did kite it for long enough, getting it hit by the Marine. And a Tornad coming up to finish off the Octopod and win the game. Oh, well, it would have more the fact that it decided to be treasonous at a terrible time. Okay. Now this timeline it decided not to be treasonous in this iteration. That was a bit bizarre. But Kaiden has just lost. That's game. He has resource processors and not much else. And no he hasn't had any way to rebuild. His only hope was to try to deal with Cybernetic Pony's base before Cybernetic Pony was able to deal with his last two units. And that's not gonna happen. Cybernetic Pony has won this, and I think Kaiden just trying to see if there's anything anything at all he could do at all, possibly, to get rid of the units here, but no, there isn't. And Kaiden should be throwing in the towel any time now. I expect a GG. I'd be surprised if he doesn't provide one shortly because he hasn't got anything. There we go. That's GG. That's game one, and Cybernetic Pony wins game one, so we're moving on to game two in just a moment. Stay tuned for that. Welcome back, Akron fans! This is r match two of the round three of... Game two of match two of round three of the Akron 23 and Christmas tournament. This is between... And please let this work. There you go, okay. This is between Krona Cybernetic Pony and Kitan. Cybernetic Pony has won the first match. He, after a tense base swap situation, was able to just rebuild better than Titan had. And thus able to win. So we are now on Rooftop Showdown, and we saw that last match between God and Mon Kuki. God, of course, went for Chrono Pony shenanigans, but Cybernetic Pony, well, Kitan's going for Kraken, of course, Cybernetic Pony going for Vekir this time. Interesting choice, not sure if he's going to species swap. I believe he tried this one time before and didn't quite pan out, but he is going for Vekir now. He may species swap later, but that is, well, that's still interesting. We'll see what goes on with this. Now, of course, Kitan is going for him as he always is. We'll see if he's going for a standard economy, if he's going to try to go for something cheesy, but given that he lost game one, I think it's going to be something more standard. Now, with Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, he does have the chance to just go for something silly, which is why I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't actually species swap, but he probably will. However, he might just go straight Vekir and decide, you know what, I'll do some crazy thing with Vekir, and I won game one, so who cares? I can just go with it, because why not? So, Kitan is going to be from here, getting an early Octopod, as is typical. He's very concerned about being rushed. Of course, in this case, he'd be rushed by Zion Pulsars, but the concern is the same and still valid. Now, Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, is making that concern apparently valid. He is getting a Depot at two minutes in the game. No Q Plasma RPs, mind you, but he can easily teleport them over. At any rate, Depot is being built very early, so Kitan wise to have built up that Octopod, at least on this iteration. We'll see what happens in later iterations, but I don't... I don't know. Cybernetic Pony may change that up. At this point, it looks like he's not planning to, and he doesn't have any... No, he doesn't have any bookmarks near the point where the depot was built, so I doubt he's planning to echo that out. Has scouted out what's going on here. He has seen what Kaiden is up to, and it looks like... Well, Cybernetic Pony still has a minute and a half to undo that species selection, but I think that... No, that happened too early. As you can see, it happened pretty much about the one second mark, and it's very difficult to actually jump back and change your species from that point. As in, pretty much impossible. If you're going to species swap, you'll wait a couple seconds just so you have the chance. But it looks like Kaiden is... He is, well, well defended. He has no problems dealing with this. He shouldn't, anyway. And yeah, the Octopod will have no problems getting rid of the scouting forces. Now, of course, the Zion Pulsar, that's the real question, but a single Octopod against one or two Zion Pulsars, Octopod wins. That's the whole point. That's why you build them like that. Now, of course, Cybernetic Pony does actually have to build Zion Pulsar for that to be valid, and we'll see if he does so. There we go, now teleporting his forces, or to teleporting his RPs over to Cube Plasma. Well, one RP over, not two, so I'm guessing he's going to go for one Zion Pulsar and skip it in. 
Now, of course, being that he knows the Octopod is there, I'm a bit surprised he hasn't decided to modify what he's planning on doing. I mean, he knows that he can't easily just waltz in there and deal damage. Kind is prepared for that. But yet, the Zion Pulsar is being built, and another one will likely... Well, might follow soon after. I would expect he'd build two or three Zion Pulses before going for it, and another QPRP being built, so definitely he is focused on early Zion Pulses and quite a few of them. And the scouting forces for Cyber Knight probably not doing too much. Now, Kaiden, on the other hand, is he going for tech early? No, he is not. He will be going for economy, likely, but he's actually hasn't been doing a lot. In fact, he hasn't spent a lot of money at all. I'm a little bit curious as to why. He is jumping back to the 36 second mark. We got his Octopod. Probably going to jump forward a bit afterwards, but he's probably going to build more RP. He's probably going to focus on that and actually do that properly. But it looks like... No, lifting off his forces. Is he going for another pro... I think he's going for another proxy. I think he may, in fact, go for... Oh, no, he's going for early mound. What the heck? Why is that... That must have been a mistake. I mean, he didn't actually pay for that mistake, but still. Why would you build an early mound in the middle of your base? Yeah, he's going for a south proxy. Excuse me. <sighs> Stupid cold. I apologize. Like I said, I have a bit of a head cold. And unfortunately, when I have a head cold, my nose runs. <sighs> Rather slowly. It's like molasses. Incidentally, it's a terrible idea to stick molasses up your nose. Not that I've tried, but I wouldn't. And I wouldn't recommend it. Anyway. Molasses aside, slow though it may be, Cybernetic Pony is attacking quite a bit faster. Not that that's saying much. Still, Kaiden, his proxy to the south, I'm... I'm a little curious what he's planning on doing this, especially being that he could actually be able to defend against most anything that Cybernetic Pony would throw at him for at least a few minutes. Long enough to build further into his base, but I guess he's just planning maybe on hoping lightning strikes at all? I mean, trying the same thing last time and hoping it actually works this time? I mean, it could be. He is definitely going for a proxy. He has the room to do it, and Cybernetic Pony is not scouting it out. Though he'll likely get very suspicious, especially by the time the Zion Pulsar gets in, which it is about to, and is in fact on the intercept path, or would be, if more the fact that the intercept path is no longer valid. In fact, the Faro and Seppi were separated quite a bit. Let's just double check. Now, Kaiden is about five minutes down from there. And he actually did send this proxy out considerably sooner than where Cybernetic Pony was looking. So Cybernetic Pony is going to get hit by quite a few octaves before he gets his first Zion Pulsar up. Possibly even when the Skip Teleport is being researched. That would be definitely devastating. On the other hand, Kaiden doesn't have much of a base. He really is focused entirely on this. This is all he has going for him right now. And this is near the Unplayable Past Edge, so this is not going to be undone. What we are seeing is definite. That is going to be something we will see very shortly as it comes up. But right now, what we are seeing is Kaiden's prep. And Kaiden's prep looks pretty dangerous. And Cybernetic Pony not able to see it. The Zion Pulsar doesn't quite have the vision to notice it. Although, actually, it's a bit hard to tell. Will that Zion Pulsar just barely see it? I think... No, I think it won't just barely see the Octopod. It goes too far north from the looks of it. And... No! It actually does get caught! Cybernetic Pony spots Kitan's proxy, but too late! Half a dozen Octopods have... Or half a dozen Octos have been built, and Kitan just decides to go for it. And he might as well, because this is gonna work. I mean, Cybernetic Pony does a skip teleport... I think he had skip teleport in that Zion Pulsar, but... No, he didn't. He didn't, in fact, have skip teleport. He was simply walking it in, and now he needs to defend. That's all he can really do is try to defend and hope he has enough energy to depot heal when he needs to, which will be pretty soon, actually. And there it goes. That's back into the depot. One Octo down, but Cybernetic Pony jumped back. Now, Kitan, from his point of view, not quite as accurate since we won't see the depot heals going properly, but Cybernetic Pony will have to deal with really a stream of Octos. That's the thing. Kaiden can just keep building more and more Octos. He can build two Octos right now if he wants to. And Cybernetic Pony, from his point of view, with the Depot heal actually happening, he only has about one Zion Pulsar in place at a time, and Kaiden not even dealing with the Zion Pulsar, just going straight for the Depot, trying to get rid of it as quickly as possible, and that's really the best way to go. Just prevent it from allowing the healing to happen, and then get rid of the Zion Pulsars. The Octopods are simply... The Octos, I should say, are simply too hard to deal with the Zion Pulsars when they're next to the depot like this. The splash damage killing the depot, and that doesn't work. So I guess, I guess Cybernetic Pony was planning on going for just a tricky species, well not species swap, but it's going for Vecchio instead of CISO. Trick Kitan into thinking that he'd have to 
go for a different strategy for defense, but the thing is, Grekum kind of has the same defense strategy very early on between Vekir and CISO. So it doesn't really change too much. And like I said, more Octos are forthcoming, and very well can be. And the Octobot has pretty much finished it off. Kitan has, has this match. That is it. That is the game. So game two will be going to Kitan. And I'll see after that who wins game three, but this is definitely game three material. Or, well, will soon be game three. Cybernetic Pony trying to get a foundation to heal up, but to no avail. There is no way out of this. Cybernetic Pony does not have the money, or at least not have the position to deal with this. His only hope is to rebuild from the Shinbeer. That is it. But I don't even know if he's going to do that. He is spending... No, he is not. He is spending too much money on foundation in his main base to rebuild from the Shinbeer to the northeast. And that's going to be game. Cybernetic Pony has no way to rebuild, and... No way to fight back. This annex is going down, and that is... Oh, apparently some bug issue as well. I'm pretty sure the bug was actually fixed in the most recent version, but this is played with the older version, the 1600. I'm pretty sure 1611 fixes the order bug, but I'm not 100% sure. At any rate, it fixes other bugs. And I realized I didn't do a video on it, but it really wasn't a huge... There wasn't a whole lot to show, I'm afraid. But that is the game. Kitan wins game two. And we shall have game three happening in just a minute or two. So stay tuned for that. Welcome back, Akron fans, to the final game of Cybernetic Pony vs. Kite, and this is round three of the Akron 2013 Christmas Tournament, and, well, casts of it from replays. But, so, first two matches, first match, there was a nice base swap, Second match, there was a, well, a proxy from Kitan that worked out surprisingly well, given that Cybernetic Point decided to go for Vecchio for some odd reason. And now we are on Cataclysm Ridge, which is going to be a match, well, we'll see. See how that match goes, probably will be with Cybernetic Point going for CISO, but one and one, so whoever wins this wins the entire well, round three match, wins the entire match, I mean, they go on to the semifinals, whoever loses goes to the loser's bracket, they have another chance if they win through the loser's bracket. But it's really a question of how that goes. The Cybernetic Pony is going to be going for CISO once again, and Kitan was again going for Grekum. And I should point out a small correction in the last game. Cybernetic Pony mentioned that he thought orders were being cancelled randomly, and he realizes now, mentioning in chat, on Twitch chat right now, that he was mistaken. It actually was that the Octos got in the way of the Foundations. That's what happened. Which makes sense, because Octos can do that easily. Anyway, Cybernetic Pony, oh, sorry, Kitan building up normally, nothing too surprising, I imagine. Yeah, he's going for early Q-Plasma RP, so he's going to get an early Octopod, as he always does. And Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, he is getting an early Armory in his base. Nothing unusual about that. I mean, he has his early Importer, he has four RPs. For CISO, six RPs aren't quite as big of a deal, given that Importers are a pretty big chunk of their resources, and they start with one. So... They don't need to build as many RPs before starting to build up, especially with an armory. Especially, especially if they're building infantry with that armory, because you really don't need a whole lot of liquid crystal. And it looks like he is a Saturday pony getting a sim base going. He he does this pretty well. Because Grekum Octo none of the Grekum units can actually get between the buildings. And since Octos are melee units, that causes some problems for them. But Marines can fire over buildings, so it's no problem for them at all. Thus, CISO has a okay counter. I mean, it's not. You really can't use it that well, because it works, but the thing is, is that there's only so much space between the buildings. And also, range is still a factor. That's very important. Now, it's important to take into account the fact that there is a pretty short range, so if anything other than Octos comes in, like, say, Octopods, which often do... <sighs> Sorry. Octopods come in, they will be able to just fire through. Not a problem. And the Octo coming in round the back... It's... Well, that is going to be dealing some damage. Now, of course, the Sim Base being in place in this situation is actually going to work quite well. And a second Marine to help out. Now, the other Marine and Special Ops are already in on their way to Kitan's base. And Kitan will have to deal with that. Though Kitan, of course, has an Octopod. So dealing with that is basically accounted for. And now, on the other hand, Cybernetic Pony is going to be having... No real problem. Oh, he's getting a bit of a problem, actually. This is kind of what I mean, is that the Octo could just attack the resource processor, and it looks like it's actually not going to. In fact, I don't see the Octo around here anywhere. 
Where's it gone? Okay, apparently Kaiden has not actually sent an Octo out. Sorry, any point of view, he... Nope, no Octo, actually, yeah. So the Octo got echoed out, as is not surprising. Oh yeah, and I was hosting this at the time. That... Wait. I think we had lag... I think I must have missed that chat in the last game, because I think there was lag in the previous game. But yeah, this game, no lag. And in case you're wondering, no, I was not watching this. I was stuck at the present the entire time, because I actually was... Like, I had this running, and I was... Like, the thing is, I don't watch the games that I host, when I host them. When it comes to tournament games, in general, it's... I think it's a bad idea to move around from the present, for the observer to move around from the present. Not because it's going to break the game or anything, but just because... Just to eliminate the possibility that the person hosting the game could communicate to any of the other players and tell them what's going on. A tournament like this, not a big deal, but if money was on the line, I'd be worried about that. Anyway, yeah, so I've not seen this game, in case you're wondering. This is actually fresh for me. And... So, Kitan getting up quick. Seppi, he is getting himself a reef pretty soon, I imagine. No Q Plasma RPs though. He hasn't gotten any more Q Plasma since he got his Octopod. Simon Ray putting it in their hand. He does have Q Plasma, getting quite a bit of that. And it looked like he was getting ground units pretty quickly. I'm guessing he's going to focus on Marines. Either that or he's going to get Mars. In fact, Mars seems a bit more likely, especially against Grekum. Mar tanks and Twin Mars do a wonderful job against Grekum. Unless Grekum has air. Once Grekum gets air, it's a little bit harder, but even then, it. Can still deal a lot of damage. They can still last long enough to just tear apart the ground of Grekum. Now, Cyber Knight Pony is not quite in a position to build up any macrofabs quite yet. He hasn't gone and done so. He's still focused on just building up his economy from the looks of it. He does have a Lancer going to scout, and that Lancer will be able to start dealing a bit of damage. The Autobot will beat it out, but the. The Lancer can still get some information. He knows what Chitin is up to. He knows that Chitin is not focused on Q-Plasma and therefore not very quickly focused on Chrono Porting. That is known. Although, admittedly, Chitin is bound to have changed that. And there's no reason to believe that that's actually the case. No, as you can see, Chitin has in fact built another Q-Plasma resource processor, allowing him to get Chrono Porting fairly soon. Or at least he will further in the future. But he's now at the Unplayable Past Edge and just double-checking this. And it looks like... Sut... Cybernetic Pony is... Well, I think he was... I thought he was trying to damage this crate, but apparently not. Not sure exactly what he's planning on doing there. Possibly trying to make Kitan think that he's to the north and then have Kitan go to attack when he thinks there's free kills to be had. But I don't think Kitan is actually going for that. No, I mean, Kitan doesn't appear to be going north to try to deal with that at all. Doesn't seem too worried. And at the same time... Another resource processor for Cybernetic Pony. He is continuing to build up his economy, not going for anything yet other than his economy. He needs to get a bit more Q Plasma. To, I mean, he needs more Liquid Crystal right now to get a Macrofab. And I expect that will be coming up very shortly. There we go. There is that Macrofab. Right on Q. Right as he got 80 Liquid Crystal. And another Marine coming up just for a bit of extra support. But the Macrofab will be the big thing. That will build up Mar Tanks. Those will build up Twin Mars. And the Marines can help as well. I mean, ground units boost Marines. Marines get a buff from ground units, as do mechs. Though mechs primarily get the buff to anti-air. But still, it gives them a buff. As it does to Marines, and Marines being spat out of that. Like, no, like there's no tomorrow. The Mar tanks have not been built quite yet, but it looks like Cybernetic Pony is just trying to spread around the map, making sure he sees what Chitin is up to, knows that Chitin has been expanding at all, might be expanding on his own as well to the northwest. And that would actually be kind of a tricky idea, because there's pretty easy path. I mean, expanding the northwest is almost a proxy, because there is a nice path over to the base of your opponent, but at the same time, that path goes two ways. So, Kaiden is gonna have to worry about Twin Mars pretty soon now. What is he up to? Kaiden has not actually got any tech yet. He does have enough Q-Plasma resource processors to start supporting tech construction, but he hasn't really got enough to support air unit construction on mass. He can build air... He can build advanced structures, he can get some air units, but Really not all that much. Maybe one or two Pharapods or Sepipods. He needs two more QP RPs to really have a solid air production base. Which he'll likely get fairly soon. However, 430 marks is no real surprise. This is not at all a shock. And there's nothing new about... I mean, nothing new about having a 6 minute spire. That's perfectly normal. So I'm not at all surprised at this. However, that being said, I'm really curious about what Cybernetic Pony is up to in the north. This marine is something to keep an eye on. 
as... Oh, apparently we jumped back before the macro pad was built. So both players at the unplayable past edge of the 515 mark. And up comes advanced structures. Almost done, and a faro being built as well. I Like I said, don't expect a whole lot of areas to come out of Chitin right now. I do expect to have more RPs being built on Q-Plasma, or possibly moved to Q-Plasma to support area unit construction. But right now, only a couple, only a Seppi pod can be built. And there is more RPs. Okay, that's what I expected. Another Q-Plasma RP, but another one yet is needed to really support large-scale area unit production for Chitin. Still, as it stands, not bad. And Cybernetic Pony on the other hand, a bit further in the future, has... His macrofab is done. He is moving out. He is getting Martanks. Martank, not quite plural yet. Soon will be plural, I'm sure. But at the moment, just one Martank. And... Nope, that's it. Only the one Martank. And more Lancers as well are coming out. And more mechs as well, I suppose, just in case Aryans come in. Not a bad thing to be cautious about, given that Kaiden is building a Sepipod. He can start to build more Sepipods. Like I said, he can't build them too quickly, but he can still build them. Getting yet another one up, and the Lancer going down to the Sepipod. No surprises there. Sepipods are great against air. And Kaiden is actually checking out. A bit curious about the Northwest. He did have a unit going to scout that. I think the Sepipod is actually going to scout that out. There was a command over to the Northwest, but Kaiden has jumped back. Has not quite set that up yet. Where we're looking. When we're looking now, yes, he does in fact have a Sepipod command. After getting through the base, scouting around, but the Sepipod will probably die to the mechs. We'll see. And no, it won't actually. The mechs aren't quite able to hit it. It is able to get away. And it is also able to see the Martanks are coming. The Twin Mars are coming. And not quite able to see this proxy, though. Not able to see the importer yet. And it looks like that will likely happen fairly soon, though. I mean, that Seppi Pod is not going to be killed. As we saw before, it's not getting killed by anything going on in the base. Moving far too fast to be hit by that. And it will end up seeing these infantry forces moving in as well. Kaiden fully aware of what's going on. He knows exactly what's going on, and he will also very soon be able to see Cybernetic Ponies Northwest. More Octopus being built up to deal with the Mar Tanks and the Twin Mars. And there is that Twin Mar. The first Twin Mar has been built up at the 750 mark. An additional Octopod. Now three Octopods and two Sepipods against the Twin Mar. This is still going to be tricky. It's still going to be a bit of a Pyrrhic victory when Chitin does this, but it's probably going to be a victory. These infantry are going to be a bit of a game changer, though. I mean, they are small, they are weak, they or ra frail, rather, but still there is enough of them that they should be able to get through with the Twin Mar support and deal a lot of damage. And there is that armory. That's likely to come up. Cybernetic Pony is going to be sending some forces down from there through this entrance to the very far west into Chitin's base. Doesn't look like it's going to be at the same time, but it might be at the same time as the forces coming in from the south. And also getting some frigates and getting his Twin Mars over the center just in case, just to be sure he has enough going on. And at the same time, Octopod's coming from Chitin to the northeast of the map, likely to attack Cybernetic Pony from the northeast side of his base. The back entrance of his base is going to be hit, as is the very secret front entrance of Chitin's base. Both players about to get attacked very heavily, and Chitin's third get- or, I guess, more natural. Chitin's south expansion getting attacked very quickly. Some defense is coming in from the Sepipods, and none of the infantry actually started to deal with the Sepipods yet. They could easily, they just haven't yet. There we go. A couple of the Marines stopping to deal with the Sepipods, but not quite enough, and Lancers to help out, but those infantry are dying too quickly. Cybernetic Pony apparently has changed this up and is going to attack more directly from his point of view. He is doing what he can to attack, but the Sepipod is not able to be spotted. And there we go. Now able to be spotted. Octopod going down. Sepipod going down. Not even the Twin Mar hasn't even come in yet, by the way. That Twin Mar doesn't even get in before some of the Octopods go down, and once it does come in, it should finish the job. And at the same time, we have the attack from the north as well. We'll be flanking these octopods. And these octopods are actually in a really bad spot. The thing is, like I said before, octopods have direct line of fire attack, while marines and twin mars have lob attacks. And down go the octopods. Down goes Chitin's military. And Chitin is about five seconds down from here. He is double checking to see what he can do, but it's really not a whole lot. Moving his units back just to make sure they aren't getting killed by the twin mar. They can still deal with the frigate somewhat. And deal with the infantry as well. But even with that... It's very difficult for the Octopus to get through it, and I mentioned the line of fire, or line of sight, because the fact that this is a bit of a cliff here, and that's important. That cliff means that it's hard for the Octopus to actually shoot down to the Marines and Special Ops, especially when they were hugging the cliff as they were. And that contributed a lot to their survivability, but even then, just the n sheer numbers of them contributed. And Kaiden losing his entire base, losing everything he had for him, and this is at the Implable Pass edge, so there isn't really anything that can be done. 
and the Twinmar just taking care of the Reef. I mean, really, the Twinmar didn't do much. Honestly, it was all infantry. The Frigates and Lancers helped a bit, but the Twinmar, that's pretty much just there for show. That actually didn't do a whole lot of damage, ultimately. And what won the game was the infantry, and that is game. And once again, we have an assertion that CSU has broken the perennial balance argument of Akron. But that aside, internal discussions about the nature of the balance of the game aside, Cybernetic Pony ha Oops. Not the <laughs> Apart from my misclicks, Cybernetic Pony has won. Kaiden is in the loser's bracket. We'll be fighting the winner of Shardon versus Haiku, and Monkey will be fighting the winner of Vermine versus Jay Raccoon, but that will be for another night. So thank you all for watching, and also the semifinals, Gold versus Cybernetic Pony. So yes, once again, thank you all for watching. Excuse me, Bosni. <laughs> I hate having a cold, by the way. Very, very annoying to have a cold. Okay. Anyway. <sighs> so, as I was saying, well done to both players. Small point out in chat from Monkuki that's 8-4-8 eight, eight LC, 4 QP for Vekir is typically what he goes for rather than 6-4. That is number of RPs on each crate type. And it's being... With the economy set up, the whole economy change, the fix, it's probably going to be a... It's probably going to be less than that. I mean, 6-4, maybe 4-4, four, four, that's more likely so. I mean, it has been tested, and Jerry's pointing out that 4-4 four, four is more likely what he expects, four, even split between liquid crystal and Q-plasma. That will definitely be interesting. However, I still think for Vecchio, they're going to need 6 at least on liquid crystals, given how expensive their vehicles are. But that's a discussion for a different night. So once again, thank you all for watching and have a good night.